After a historic test flight that saw the Starship Super Heavy lift off and terminate minutes into launch, SpaceX has already planned for the changes it will make for the next attempt. The next test flight is thought to make use of new boosters that feature several new improvements. But first, SpaceX must upgrade their facilities and secure a new launch license from the FAA, something that is easier said than done. Could SpaceX's reckless behavior finally force the FAA to ground their rockets? And can the improvements to the next prototype help Starship achieve orbit? Before we get into the improvements to the Starship, there are some details on the Federal Aviation Administration FAA, we would like to cover. In recent years, SpaceX and the FAA have had a rocky relationship, largely due to SpaceX's failure to adhere to proper launch guidelines. For instance, the company was slow in action in providing post-flight launch data to the authorities, which was particularly notable when it launched 53 Starlink satellites from Florida in August 2022. The FAA proposed a $175,000 fine for SpaceX's failure to provide this data within seven days of launch. The missing data is crucial for the FAA to assess the likelihood of the launch vehicle colliding with the numerous objects orbiting Earth. This is not the first time the FAA and SpaceX have butted heads over reckless launches. In 2021, SpaceX applied for an FAA waiver, an official document that authorizes certain aircraft operations beyond the limits of standard regulations during prototype spacecraft launches. The FAA denied the request, but SpaceX launched anyway, leading to an investigation and the temporary suspension of operations at one of its launch sites. What does this mean for the Starship and its next launch? Given this tense relationship, it remains to be seen when SpaceX's next Starship launch will take place. The FAA has advised that SpaceX will need to implement several corrective measures to minimize the launch's environmental impact and ensure compliance with its regulations. SpaceX is fairly confident that the next test flight will be much cleaner as the next launch is believed to feature Booster 9, which is a substantial upgrade over the Booster 7 used in the first test flight. According to Elon Musk back in September 2022, Booster 9 has many design changes when compared to Booster 7. For starters, Booster 9 features an engine isolation system, which will provide far greater control for the ground crew in the event of failure after launch. Elon has said, we're taking a little risk here, with Booster 7 being the first booster to be used in the first flight attempt, and engine isolation was done as retrofit, so not as good as on Booster 9. Additionally, one of the most notable changes from previous prototypes is the removal of the hydraulic power units on the side of the aft section that were used to power the thrust vector control TVC, gimbaling system. The upcoming Booster 9's engine represent the initial implementation of electric TVC, a departure from the hydraulic TVC employed by Booster 7 used in the first flight attempt. These are what steer the vehicle's Raptor engines, and as a result, the rocket's exhaust nozzle has the ability to pivot horizontally. By adjusting the nozzle's position, the direction of the rocket's thrust is altered with respect to its center of gravity. Furthermore, some hardware has also been added to the thrust dome to improve structural stability. The large liquid methane pipes for the gimbling Raptor engines are now pre-mounted on the thrust puck, which will simplify the pre-assembly needed on the engines and may speed up installation for future launches. Lastly, there are additional plates on the exterior faces of the booster's grid fins, possibly adding extra strength against warping. The next flight is also expected to make use of Ship 25, after the previous prototype, Ship 24 was destroyed in the first flight attempt. Ship 25 is currently being tested and has already undergone several cryogenic tests to verify the structural integrity of the ship in preparation for the next Starship test flight. The fifth and latest cryogenic test was done on May 5th in SpaceX's Starbase in Texas. Both Ship 24, used in the first flight attempt, and Ship 25 are thought to be very similar with no significant differences or improvements. Elon Musk has claimed that the destruction caused at the launch pad in the previous attempt was a calculated decision that backfired. He stated that after reviewing data from previous static fire tests, engineers at SpaceX assumed that the pad would hold up to the 5 million pounds of thrust generated by the Starship. However, some problems cannot be anticipated by math alone. SpaceX has also received significant backlash from residents in the area as dust and debris from the launch were sent flying, sometimes for miles, creating concerns for some locals. 
According to a statement by the city of Port Isabel, it has been confirmed that the spray of Starship Detritus that covered locals' cars and homes posed no health risk and was in fact sand and dust lofted airborne and thrown miles in every direction by the rocket's liftoff. Closer to ground zero, the 33 engines of the rocket's main booster left a literal crater in the concrete at Starship's launch pad. Debris large enough to crush a car was sent flying in every direction. And while the tower was left standing, the launch complex was in need of some major cleanup efforts. Elon Musk stated that SpaceX started building a massive water-cooled steel plate to go under the launch mount, but that it would not have been ready before the launch on April 20th. According to Musk, the implementation of the steel plate was already approved prior to the test, but could not be finished due to time constraints. Additionally, SpaceX engineers believe that the orbital mount's underlying heat-resistant concrete structure was strong enough to withstand the force and temperatures of a full launch. The eventual destruction of the structure points to SpaceX's failure to account for a lot of variable factors and serves as a harsh lesson to better prepare for the future. The billionaire CEO has said in 2020 that there would be no need to use such a flame diverter to steer the flames on the ground, but acknowledged that could be the wrong decision. Other launch sites in the United States, such as SpaceX's own pads at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, use flame diverters, which are large, cavernous hallways leading away from a rocket's underside to steer its tail of fiery forces in a controlled path aimed at minimizing damage. Without such a plan, debris kicked up during liftoff could strike the rocket itself and compromise the mission and public safety. Speaking on the launch tower, Musk stated, the tower itself is in good shape. We see no meaningful damage to the tower, even though they got hit with some pretty big chunks of concrete. We are also going to replace a bunch of the tanks in the tank farm, but these tanks we wanted to replace anyway. Tom Murata, an advisor of launch regulations to space companies, said that before any next Starship launch attempt, the FAA would need to approve the changes to the launch pad infrastructure to prevent another potentially hazardous scenario. While the recent upgrades may reduce the risk of another mid-air rocket termination during a flight attempt, they do not address the environmental impact of these tests. Environmental groups have taken action against the FAA for approving SpaceX's Starship vehicle without fully analyzing the potential damage it could cause to delicate lands. According to the lawsuit filed on May 1st in Washington, D.C., SpaceX has been granted permission to conduct 20 Starship launches per year for the next five years. The suit emphasizes the environmental significance of the area and the impact that SpaceX's presence is having on the surrounding habitats. The Center for Biological Diversity stated, SpaceX's Boca Chica launch site is surrounded by state parks, national wildlife refuge lands, and important habitat for imperiled wildlife, including northern Aplomato falcons, ocelots, and critically endangered sea turtles. The lawsuit calls on the FAA to conduct a full environmental review of SpaceX's Starship activities in South Texas. The FAA has already been accused of showing leniency to SpaceX and allowing them to indulge in reckless behavior that could result in permanent environmental damage. It will be interesting to see how the agency responds to these accusations and if SpaceX will be punished as a result. SpaceX are learning a lot from the first Starship launch attempt, which hopefully will lead to improvements to their next full-stack Starship and the launch pad system for the next test flight. What are your thoughts? Will the improvements be enough? Are you confident that Starship will reach orbit in their next attempt? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. Feel free to like the video and subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to follow this developing story with us.